with Tony uh, Beadle now up in uh, Rockport at the. Uh, you know, Tony, I'm never sure how to pronounce it. Is it Shalin Lu or sh- how do I pronounce uh, it? Shalin. The accent Shalin. is on the first syllable. Shalin, Shalin Lu. Lu. All right. Mm-hmm. So we're in the main hall here. Yes, and this was built in 2010, 29. It opened in June of 2010, and uh, it was its predecessor was. Uh, an organization that did 22 concerts at the Rockport Art Association, and it is they decided they needed a better place to play, and $20 million later, this building arrived. Rockport and, Art Association, okay. Yeah, and it's, it's actually the Rockport Chamber Music Festival is the organization that, that used the Art Association. They rented the space, and, and it just got harder and harder as the organization grew, because it's a great art gallery, but it couldn't accommodate 250 people for a night and then the next day become a gallery again and flipping okay. it over all summer long. So this building uh, is designed by the same architects that have done um, Seijo Zawa Hall in Tanglewood and they're wow. now designing a uh, three venue concert hall in La Jolla, California and another one actually in Groton, Massachusetts right now. So. Um, they have quite a track record, and I think this is some of their best work, if I do say so myself. Uh, so come down here. Mm-hmm. And we look, we'll look backwards. Okay. Um, one thing that the organization wanted to have was a sense of closeness and intimacy to the music. And so what you see here is 334 seats. And uh, if you look up there... Some of the some of the seats ex- actually extend over onto the stage. People like to sit up there sometimes or stand oh, up cool, and they yeah. can see the artist. And another way that they wanted to make it intimate was to keep the, this uh, stage low. So you know how mm-hmm. you go on stage, this can be like this or right. higher. Uh, they kept this low so that the uh, sort of like as immediate eye contact with the audience. I'm glad you pointed it out because I didn't really notice that when you're in here. It is intimate and that yeah. that's huge. It's yeah, a, it's all very well thought out. Mm-hmm. And the other interesting thing about this is the acoustics were. The most important element, I might say, in the construction. I mean, obviously, the visual aesthetic is is fantastic, but this has also been designed for good acoustics as as well. Uh, It's a very traditional uh, shaped space, which is a shoebox, if you can see that in the video. And uh, if you'll notice, there's there are little or no right angles, and all of the building materials, the wood, the stone, and everything, have all been well thought out as to their acoustic properties. So. So that was, you can never tell how a hall will end up acoustically after the, when the first, until the first notes are played. But mm-hmm. you, can, you can sort of you know, bank on a few things to, that, to make it a success. So, uh, and the interesting thing is in 2010, in 29, the organization did about 22 uh, concerts a year. And in 2010, we opened. And that year, I think we did about 75 concerts. So we almost tr- more than tripled. Today, every year, we do about 120 or so wow. concerts. And uh, we have the Rockport Chamber Music Festival still exists as our centerpiece. And that's every June and July. But now we have Rockport Jazz Festival. And we have any number of concerts and events in between. Another thing about this um, uh, theater, which you've noticed already, we come up here. OK. <clears throat> so you'll see that your the back wall of the stage is glass, <laughs> yeah. and it too is water. Uh, Can't be missed. It's waterproof and soundproof. Wow! Uh, and people will say to me, "Well, where did you get the technology to have this so be so soundproof?" Well, think of if you think of it. You go to an airport and you see windows looking out at the planes, jet engines. Same same material, mm-hmm. same same windows. So and uh, wow. what you see, it's a great view. And there are also doors that close here. We can close it for if it. Uh, sometimes the artist does not want to use the window, remarkably. And uh, <laughs> we also uh, close them when we run um, opera because we have up there. There's a screen that comes down, and we have a surround sound system. So we do the Metropolitan Opera here. Oh, that's right. And yeah. we do the National Theatre of England, and sometimes we we show a movie here. We actually had a, a showing of um, of uh, Spotlight last year with uh, the Voice of the Faithful sponsored it and we had some of the uh, characters from the that are portrayed in the movie the reporters a couple of reporters came so we like to add on you know when we have a movie it's usually a, with a very good add-on like that and this is a Steinway concert grand it's a nine foot is this the one that David plays at this is the only one we have this is the one David DeVoe our artistic director plays and this is its house people say how do you get it on and off the stage we never do <laughs> it's okay. back here <laughs> all right so and it, we also have a bunch of storage tremendous as you can see too. yeah yeah so 
Now I feel like I should have a guitar up here standing on the stage. This is fabulous. Look at this place. Oh my goodness. Wow. And and when, when artists come, um, uh, do, do they? What, what do they say after they played here? After they perform here? I think it's best uh, st stated as Chris Body was here about four years ago, and he came with his band, and he he said. Guys, isn't it great to play on a stage where you, you can see the audience instead of being in a dark cave? Mm -hmm. wow. And and uh, and it has a great reputation in the business now. Fabulous. So so let's go backstage.